Um, some technology we saw not too long ago, these are um, shades that will retract in the wind and they'll pivot based on the sun. So it'll always keep the, the you know, try to keep the one location that you need um, shaded. And an interesting safety slash shade device for a hot tub that I thought was interesting that actually raises up automatically and it's a very secure uh, cover when it's down. So keep people out, keep some of getting in and provide a little shade on the, on the side. So uh, outdoor shades are an interesting aspect, particularly in areas with bugs. You know, you can, you, it does two things. It can keep bugs out. It can also be a solar shade for the little space behind it. Um, they're in tracks, they have a high wind rating. Outdoor space, and then you can also have the heat. There's interesting heat elements up in the ceiling there around that kitchen. Um, outdoor lighting. I don't know, have you spent a lot of time with outdoor lighting? I, first of all, once again, it has a dramatic emotional impact. Yeah. It was funny yesterday because they were talking about the fact that walking through models in homes, oftentimes people don't ever experience the lighting because you're walking through it in the middle of the day. And I thought it was very interesting, the fact that we now have these self-guided tours that people are taking in the home, and all of a sudden, those are all happening in the evening. So people are walking through and they're actually able to experience the ambiance that's created by lighting. It is just as powerful outdoors as it is indoors, there's no question. Yeah, there was, a, there was a company in Hawaii that had a tiki torch that was automated. So you had an actual flame out of the top and you had a, uh, a light source coming out of the bottom. So you had that natural flame for the natural warmth uh, in addition to the pathway lighting that would stream down. Um, healthy homes, green walls. Um, this is a television sort of baked into the green wall. Healthy home tech we've talked about. Um, there's lots of examples out there that are trying to connect the outdoors and the inside, um, automated watering, um, and even, even uh, uh, herb gardens and vegetable gardens that people are growing. So we're gonna jump into some specialty rooms and applications. So, uh, you know, how many people have a bowling alley in their house? Um, not a lot, but it's actually a fun, <laughs> it's, it's a fun application, and um, you'd be surprised that at, uh, uh, how much it does get used. So we, I actually did a lot of study on some of the technology that went in the homes with homeowners back when it was with um, Nortec and you know, to try to value what they use. And, and these home spaces are great for families. Get the TV out of there, although the one is there. Get people doing things together. And, um, Physical activity and in this situation, you're talking about not only a bowling alley, but you're so talking about custom lighting and sound in there as well. Right. Because it now becomes an entire entertainment room as opposed to just a bowling alley. So this is from our friends at Crestron. This is a house in Florida, and that piece of art on the wall is digital, and it's an NFT art. So I am not exactly sure what's gonna happen with NFT art. If you don't know what it is, look it up. It's a very interesting uh, either technology or scam, not quite sure. However, <laughs> what, this, what this did was the artist created this sort of sea anemone type technology that was connected to a manometer outside. So as the wind changed, it would change exactly. the effect of, um, and of course they could change what was on there. So it was really more of an accent piece than an art piece um, integrated to the control system as well. Well, as I said before, one of the big challenges that housewives have is they don't want that big black rectangle on the wall. That's one of the things that we saw just recently from Samsung, for example, where not only are they doing the picture frame so that it actually looks like a piece of artwork, not like a video image that's on top, but it also has a rotating mount that now rotates the entire thing. So the aspect ratio, when it's not being used like a TV, actually looks like a beautiful painting that's on the yeah, wall. Yeah. And of course, converts when it's ready to move into video mode. Yeah, and they have subscription-based artwork that you can subscribe to. Absolutely. Um, so other sort of specialty rooms, you've got your golf simulators, um, multi-purpose rooms, um, another view of a golf simulator that's sort of connected to a casual area in the house. Um, in California, I don't know if elsewhere, but they're making garages and the cars and motorcycles you store in them more of a feature of the house. They actually will have put these glass walls between the garage and the living area. Exactly. And you know, if you've got a half a million dollar car or more, why not treat it like art and uh, bring it into the house? And here's some sort of integrated lifts. Um, 
some fun spaces like I was that. in a house in Las Vegas where this was being done, and the garage was four stories up. Oh my God. So you drove into the equivalent of an elevator, and then the car went up four stories next to his bedroom. So not only was he able to get out of his car and walk right into his bedroom, but as you mentioned, this beautiful glass wall that created this diorama of his car on the other side. So Yeah, excellent. Here's an example of that actually right now where you have the car sort of going into the, uh, the man cave slash office. This is back to that house uh, in Vegas, uh, Vegas Modern. I think it was a $25 million house, um, packed with technology, packed with some really cool um, elements. Um, the cigar room, the wine room, ventilation is a big thing there, obviously, the smoke eaters. Um, you can really do an amazing job of keeping, uh, keeping the rooms not smelling stinky um, and having a cool place to congregate. Just enough aroma left over to remind you that it's a cigar room, but you're not gagging at the same time. So yeah. that's the idea. Um, wine storage. Um, some cool ways to feature your wine collection. There's automation in the, in the, in the motorized shelves and storage systems. Um, there's also technology that integrates with, I think, a few of the control platforms that helps you manage your inventory. Um, so I've done a lot of work in the smart integrated power systems, and this is something that's actually evolving quickly, where you have smart panel, circuit breaker panels, that are conducting what gets power when. Um, this is not as, as glamorous as it is um, adding resiliency to the home. Right. Um, you know, you've got the, the cars now eventually that are gonna be a backup power source to the house and a lot of technology has to uh, be leveraged to make all that work. And it's gonna be an intersection between the electrical contractors and the low voltage guys for the smarts of it. And there's no question that in these type of applications, what the person is buying is a substantial amount of peace of mind because of the fact that all these things are gonna be handled automatically and they just don't have to worry about it once the system's been installed. And that's gonna be, it's gonna be advantageous. I mean, it's amazing because you have somebody that builds a $10 million house and then they wanna save money on electricity. But yeah, that's the way the brain works, so that's how people are well, doing with it. I think it's, it's, when you look at the Ford F-150, it has an 80 amp charger. Now, most of these homes, you know, they have 400 or 600 amp service. Okay, well, what happens when you get the second EV? or the third EV. Exactly. At some point, you're not going to be able to charge those cars at their max capacity. So you need something to dictate, to send available power to it, let's say during the day when you're running other things, mm -hmm. and then you increase the amount of amperage that gets sent to it at night uh, so that you make sure you got a fully charged car in the morning. So those are things that are coming um, down the pike as well. Um, solar. Um, Solar panels aren't pretty. There's a bunch of technology coming to the table uh, that makes solar power prettier, from the Tesla tiles to other ways to aggregate the uh, photovoltaic energy and not have it look as unattractive. These are uh, panels that actually look like roof shingles. They degradate the capacity or the, or the volume of electricity they can collect a little bit, right. but they do add some nice aesthetic. And please, you're absolutely right. I live right here in Arizona, and there is solar on every other house as you go down the street. And there's no question, when you move into a luxury neighborhood, that having those big, beautiful panels up on the ceiling or up on the roof are, are absolutely untenable. You'd like to avoid those at all times. So making a slight sacrifice in efficiency mm -hmm. to be able to get something much more attractive makes a big difference. Yeah. Yep, sorry. You need to go the other way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, another example of um, actually um, uh, glass uh, railings that those little black squares are actually collecting um, sunlight and turning it into energy as well. Um, other examples of roofs and windows, um, if you're facing the right way and you have the right angle, um, it's, a, it's a design slash utility element. Um, this was an interesting product that I saw at the Builder Show this year. These are um, uh, na uh, uh, they're gas fireplaces. When I say gas, they're the uh, uh, alcohol, yes. alcohol uh, tanks like you'd have for a burner on a boat or you go camping with. 
and they are allowed in areas like in California, you're, you're being limited to gas hookups now. And so for outdoor, outdoor entertaining or indoor, they give a, a little bit of warmth, they really give a pretty effect, and it's a very low um, environmental footprint that they're providing. And that's become popular in areas like this, yeah. where you've got a hot area anyway, you love the idea of having a fireplace, but there's nobody in the world that wants to turn an actual fireplace on in the middle of the summer here. And a lot of them are ventless. Um, they really, there's, there's, a, there's a nominal fumes out there, and uh, so it's cool, cool right. technology. Um, I think I doubled up that slide. All right, so we're going to shift into technology and design. Um, this is where your interior designer, I know um, a lot of projects that I've been involved with that start with the interior designer, they have a big, uh, a big impact on what goes into the house. So there's technology to finish face plates, to match the wallpaper, match the stonework, the wood, or the paint color. Um, another product that I saw um, at, C at the Cedia show last week, I think they call it Liquid View. Mm -hmm. And these are, this is clear glass. This was in the Leon booth. Did you get a chance to see I that? I did, yes. Yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. I, very. <laughs> so these are, it, it's clear glass, and it actually, it, it's a TV. And the company is curating images from around the world of nature scenes, of cities like Paris. What, what else did they talk about? I, they were using any number of things. Yeah. I, the one that I really enjoyed was one that, that literally looked like a stream that was running through the forest on the outside. And you flip a switch and it appears that that's what you're looking at. Yeah, it's an amazing yeah. effect. And so they, and you have these three windows and they actually make the entire view that you're looking at look like you're going across those, um, those windows. So these are all walls that, are, that don't have windows and this, uh, this product w was pretty impressive. Um, here's an example of the room before they had it on. Here's an example once they added the product. I mean, it's, Pretty powerful. Completely changes the ambiance of the room. Yeah, and I think they're going to go with some sort of subscription-based uh, content on this. No doubt. Yeah, of course. Why not? <laughs> Another thing to get you every month. Um, ways to uh, accent or hide technology like speakers. I mean, we've been trying to paint speakers forever. Yes. Um, so what are the other ways? That you got uh, speakers. Speakers are one of the technologies that yeah. have to that absolutely, like a television screen, have to be present in the room. You can't put speakers, it's a, it's a transducer, it's got to move air into the room, and so the only way to do it, I mean, there are some that are now going behind drywall, and or a, th a thin skim over the top and whatnot, and there's a lot of people using those because they're basically invisible. But using that type of, of, of product, you are limiting some of the performance characteristics. So if you really want high performance, you got to have the speaker in the room. And you're right, we have gone through, jump through hoops to find ways to make them less and less apparent in the room. The, the important thing about this, and I, I think this is one of the focuses we were talking about before this session, is that the idea behind this is for you as a builder to be able to say yes. When a customer says, hey, <clears throat> I really want X, we want to make sure you've been exposed to everything that's available out there so that you can say, as a matter of fact, I know that's possible. And I've got an integrator that can make that happen. And loudspeakers is a perfect example of that. Yes, we can hide those away. We can paint them the color of the wood, or we can, uh, we can put the pattern over the top of them that you're already using on that wall or that ceiling. That part of it is, is real critical, because like I said, loudspeakers are one of those that have to be present in the room for them to function. Right. And obviously, you have a, a long background in audio. What a, the, are the... Invisible speakers, are they getting better? I mean, we're, we're they're certainly getting on better. That. Yeah. Yeah, they're not, again, it's physics. Yeah. And we don't have the ability to be able to make those things absolutely disappear. And when right. you put them behind drywall, even in the speakers we're talking about now, it's a thin diaphragm, it goes inside the wall, and then the drywaller is responsible for a very thin coating of mud over the top so that you can now paint it and make it disappear but you're making sacrifices again in physics right. in order to be able to make that happen because I've got to vibrate that. If I vibrate it too much, I'm gonna tear the plaster or the, the, the mud right off the wall. So there are sacrifices being made in those situations. Yeah. Now, one of the great benefits that's going on right now is more and more um, loudspeaker manufacturers producing very small output for mid and high frequencies 
that are coming out of the ceiling and then hiding a subwoofer someplace else in the room to be able to take care of the lower frequencies. Right. And now you end up with that invisible experience and you can still feel it hit you in the middle of the chest if that's what you're after. Right, right, so right, right. yeah, that's become popular. So speaker location, that house in, um, in Vegas, they had an interesting design element where the ceilings had, tr uh, <laughs> they call them troughs, uh, but all of the technology, lighting, smoke detectors, wireless access points, were kind of hidden up in this recess that um, had a really nice design element and it, it solved a lot of the you know, wall acne or uh, ceiling acne and that reflective ceiling plan. And ceilings are interesting because I've been, as you mentioned, I spent years working in that particular that particular mindset, trying to get people to let us put speakers up in the ceiling. And typically it was, I mean, the, the, I'm not trying to be misogynistic, it's just that the women had more of a design eye than the men did. Men were more interested in performance and the women were more interested in the aesthetic. And we ran into that all the time. It's not always the case. But one of the things that I used to do was uh, I, would, I would ask the woman who I was talking to to look at my watch. And I would hold my watch out and I said, do this for me. If you just wa look at my watch and don't look away, no matter what happens, don't look away from my watch. And I'd like you to describe your ceiling to me right now. What's in your ceiling? And it was so much fun to watch her go. Well, there's um, some can lights, and uh, we've got that one chandelier that's over the table over there. And, uh, well, I, I, I think that's about it. And then I'd have her look at the ceiling. And she'd go, oh, my God gosh, because there were, there was ventilation up there, there were sprinklers up there, there were smoke detectors up there, N no, never paying any attention to it. And so oftentimes it would take just that, and I'm going to say, look, I'm going to put four of these in this room, and I really don't think it's going to make a difference. And after that example, she went, oh my gosh, you put something on the wall, and it sticks out instantaneously, but the majority of us don't look up, so it just doesn't have that effect. Right.